For years, Train 36T to Allentown was the first scheduled southbound freight out of Binghamton, New York, even going back to the days of the Canadian Pacific when it ran as the NS Train 13T and the CP Train 933. The midnight runner, as I like to call it, 36T was a train rarely seen in daylight at any point during its trip, but over the years, and largely due to changes in the way that traffic moves over the railroad, 36T is more of a daylight runner now than a night train. Good news for the rail fans, bad news for motorists like the one stuck on the other side of this crossing. The crew of today's 36T is getting their track authority to head south to Scranton and DuPont Junction. From there, they'll cross onto the Reading and Northern Lehigh Division to Jim Thorpe and Lee Heighton where they'll pick up the NS's own Lehigh line that goes straight into Allentown Yard. It's December 1st, and with the temperature around the upper 30s, it's an unseasonably warm day in Bingo Town for this time of the year. What got me up to B-Town today is the annual Christmas Toys for Tots train that's sponsored by NS, Amtrak, and the Marine Corps Reserve. This train begins its journey in North Jersey on the New York, Susquehanna and Western and travels northwest to the southern tier town of Binghamton. From there, it travels northeast on the NS Freight Line to Delanson, making stops along the way at the small trackside towns of Bainbridge, Oneonta and Cobleskill. Its showing is a popular one with children and rail fans coming from all over the Empire State, the Keystone State and the Garden State. Having never seen this train before, I didn't know what to expect, but having been at Levin's famous Pennsylvania Railroad E8s in the power consist, I was expecting a colorful turnout. At 10 a.m., train 041 made its way out of the Binghamton Yard and into the staging area to the eager delight of the people, right on schedule. Almost immediately, the Marine Corps Reserve, railroad personnel, and other volunteers began distributing the toys as the crowds gathered around in a frenzied but orderly fashion. For the rail fans like me, the greatest Christmas present we could ask for was near the front of the train. The chance to photograph those dazzling E8s was something that I've been wanting to do for years. The Spick and Span Streamliners have been dazzling audiences all over the East Coast for years, but now they're making their last run on the main line as the rumor is that after this excursion, they'll be heading for storage indefinitely. 
As far as railroad operations on Norfolk Southern go, Binghamton is its northeastern hub, and I couldn't help wondering what kind of traffic delays and kinks the Toys for Tots train would cause for the rest of the traffic in the area. And while the offloading of holiday cheer was taking place on the conductor side of the train, on the engineer side we were getting our second freight of the day with a pair of the latest rebuilds from the big two diesel locomotive builders leading the way. The SD70ACU and the AC44C6M are two of the newest rebuilt locomotives on NS and coming off of the rebuild line now are the SD70ACCs and the SD80ACUs. The buzz around the high was that this train was headed to Buffalo. Assuming that was correct and judging by the time, the reasonably short length of this train and its makeup, I speculate that this could likely be a W7T extra. Chasing trains like the 041 is nice because like Amtrak, they run on a schedule which makes it easy to plan the next stage of your chase. 041 is reversing so that it can clear the switch so that it can move over to the other track. This is because it's only from the other track that the train can move on to the freight line to Albany. Route 7 is one of those old two-lane highways that existed after the railroad but before the interstate highways. And like the parallel Interstate 88, it follows the old Delaware and Hudson main line, now the Norfolk Southern Freight Line, all the way from Binghamton to Albany perfectly. Along the way, we stopped at Harpersville to get a shot of something else that I've been wanting to record for years. The tall steel trestle makes a great place to catch a train like the 041, but I was only interested in photographing the bridge. Bainbridge, New York and Shenango County is situated on Route 7 about halfway between Binghamton and Oneonta and was the second stop for the 041. 
With a population of over 3,000, Bainbridge is home to Jedediah Smith, one of America's most famous mountain men and early explorers of the West, and also an abundance of pure white squirrels. Sadly, there were no white squirrels to be found when we were here. Right on time, train 041 rounded the curve into downtown Bainbridge to an eagerly awaiting crowd. Like Bainbridge, Oneonta is a halfway point on the railroad, this time between Binghamton and Albany. The county seat of Otsego, Oneonta was once the home of the largest railroad roundhouse in the world. And along with the roundhouse, there were the D&H shops and the Oneonta yard. Today, little remains of that glorious empire. In its heyday, the town itself was a hub, but in 2018, Oneonta yard is little more than a lot of empty space. There's the main line, a passing siding, a few remaining shop buildings used by the track and signal crews, and one customer. On the south end of that siding at milepost 557, the Toys for Tots train made its way north into town. The bad news was that Oneonta would be the end of our chase of the 041. The good news was that a meet had been set here with the westbound 23K out of Ayer, Massachusetts on the Pan Am Southern. 23K is an Ayer to Chicago intermodal, and not long after the 041's marker disappeared around the bend, 23K's headlight appeared with a long train of intermodal containers bound for the Windy City. Take note of those double stack containers up front. If you've watched early videos of mine, then you may remember that 23K and its eastbound sister train, the 22K, are single tier intermodal trains. As the 23K headed west to Binghamton, it was time for us to do the same. There are many Christmas trains to enjoy in America. 
In central Pennsylvania, one such train is a magical Christmas time experience that families have made a tradition for years. During the ride, you'll experience the reading of the Polar Express and a visit from Santa and his friends Rudolph, Frosty the Snowman, Buddy the Elf, and many more. The train is fully decorated inside and out and each ride is about an hour long from Maynard Street to the Williamsport Regional Airport. The rides are sponsored by the Williamsport Lycoming Chamber of Commerce. The North Shore Railroad donates the locomotives and crew and the Penn Valley Railroad provides the passenger trains and onboard services. The Cedar-Cog Joint Rail Authority receives no money from the trips but pays for the special liability insurance policy needed for the excursions throughout the year.